Hello, hello, hello. Welcome into the Audio Ground School podcast. Hope you guys are doing great. My name is Nick, the host of the Audio Ground School podcast, founder of Part Time Pilot. How's everybody doing today? It is August. Holy cow. That's crazy. I feel like the summer just went by. I mean, every year, every month is just going by faster and faster. I'm getting older and older. It's crazy. But it's August 5th. And yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying good weather, maybe getting a lot of flying hours in. So in today's episode, we're going to continue through the IFR ground school and we're going to be inside your step one IFR ground school lessons course. So you get a membership and it, you have a step one course, a step two course, and then some bonus courses with like downloads and additional videos. And the step one course is all the lessons, audio lessons, video lessons, written lessons, quizzes, visual aid, mnemonic devices, all of that. And then step two is practice tests. And then we do, you know, we review those and give you your endorsement after that. So we're in the step one course. We're in section two. Section one is just introduction. And we've done altitudes, kind of reviewed altitudes. And then we did IFR altimeter operations. And now we're going to talk about pedostatic instruments. Again, most of this or a good chunk of this is review from private pilot. But some of this stuff is new, right? Some of these are more advanced aircrafts that you're flying in IFR and how you use them and the understanding of your instruments that you have to have is more in depth with IFR. So it's a little bit of a review, but also goes a little bit more in depth into that stuff. So that's what we're going to cover today. Pedostatic instruments in the lens of your IFR training. Before we get to that, I just want to thank everybody that showed up to last Wednesday's happy hour celebration and study session. Just had the idea. We had, we hit 20,000 followers on Instagram and our hundredth episode here on the podcast. So I thought we should celebrate somehow. So I thought, Hey, we'll do like a virtual happy hour. I'm going to have a beer to celebrate. You guys can have a drink with me as well. Might make studying a little bit more fun. And then we'll do a live Q and a, you can come and answer any questions that you might have on your training that has been recorded and placed into both bonus courses for the private pilot and IFR ground school. Whenever we do a live lesson like that, we record them and put them kind of in a video library in your bonus courses. So you can watch it whenever, if you're one of our members, I just want to thank everybody for showing up. We added a substantial amount to the, the scholarship. So what I did there is the happy hour. Everybody that showed up, I bought them a virtual beer. Basically everyone that showed up, I donated $5 to our next scholarship. That deadline is August 23rd. You have to be a member of the private pilot or IFR ground school. It started at $1,000, but then I'm still kind of going through all the numbers of the people that showed up to add $5 for each person. So I'll have that total a little bit later, but we're going to give that out sometime after August 23rd, but the deadline to apply for that is August 23rd. When you sign up, it's in your welcome email. You'll get a series of emails right when you sign up. One of those is a welcome email that tells you how to use the course, how to access everything. And it has a link to apply to your scholarship. So it's a pretty short application. Go ahead and you got to fill that out. And there's a couple other instructions at the top of that that you want to make sure you read as well. All right. So the last thing I want to update you guys on is uh, we have fully rolled out now our instructor portal. So an instructor CFI or even a flight school with a bunch of CFIs can sign up and create a group. So if you're flight school listening to this, you might want to create a group in our website and our portal and then we can add students to your group that will allow your instructor so if you're an instructor let's say you're an instructor you have a few students in part-time pilot you create an instructor profile with part-time pilot we create you a group your own instructor group that gives you free access to whichever ground school it is so you'd have a group for ifr and then you'd have a group for private pilot uh, we kind of keep those separate and you'd get access, free access to the course, the quizzes, the lessons, all that stuff. So you can you know, review it with your students and all that stuff. But then when we add your students to that group, you'll be able to see your students' progress. So that means you can click on the student, you can see you know, what lesson they're on, how they did on the quiz, how many quiz attempts they've had, uh, even how long it took them to take the quiz. And then you can even review the quiz with them. So you can pull up the exact results of the quiz for the flight lesson and say, okay, why did you get this wrong? You know, maybe quiz them on the ones that got wrong. Really, really powerful tool bridging the gap. That's one of the things I want to do with part-time pilot is kind of, you know, the price of an online do-it-yourself course, but the intimacy of like a one-on-one instruction. You know, that's why we get to your emails really fast. That's why we have the AI trained AI on the FA content 
chats on every single lesson. That's why we do custom reports. And that's why now we're connecting you with your flight instructors for those who want access. To apply, you just have to be an instructor. So you have to tell us your instructor cert so we can check that cert number. And then you also have to have at least one student enrolled in one of our ground schools. So they have to do that first. They have to purchase it first. Once they purchase, you can let us know they've done it and you want them to be added to our group. Just tell us the email they purchased with and then we'll add them to your group and boom. Then you can access your portal, see all your students stuff. And uh, it's going to be really, really powerful for both students learning and instructors to ensure their students are getting the best learning experience. All right. So that's it for the updates. Uh, again, if you don't like these updates or the, the few ads we do for the companies we really, really like in the aviation world, you can get uh, our VIP podcast when you sign up for the online ground school, either private pilot or IFR. When you sign up, you'll get an automatic invite from Hello Audio. It's a place where we can store secret podcasts on your favorite podcast player. So when you sign up, you'll get an invite link. You click that, you just follow the instructions for your podcast player. And then only you can see. So you can't search for our VIP podcast on any of these podcast players, but you have to get a special invite. We'll send you that invite link when you show up. And then you can listen to our VIP podcast, which has all our bonus episodes and is ad and update rambling on free like I'm doing right now. So if you want that, you just want the lesson stuff. That's our VIP podcast. And that is for people who join our ground schools for, again, lifetime access. The value just keeps getting better and better. All right. So without further ado, let's get today's lesson on IFR pedostatic instruments. The pedostatic system provides either pedo, also called as ram or static air, collected from ports on the aircraft to instruments inside the cockpit. The altimeter, VSI, and airspeed indicator all use static air, while only the airspeed indicator uses pedo or ram air. Pedo air or ram air is collected at the leading edge or front of the pedo head, usually found under one of the wings. For my Cherokee Warrior, the pedo probe is below the left wing at about the midpoint. The probe consists of a free stream or ram air inlet and a drain with two holes. Your aircraft may be equipped with a pedostatic probe rather than a pedo probe. A pedostatic probe collects both ram air and static air. A pedostatic probe has three or four holes, one for ram air, one or two for static air, and one for a drain. So in the ground school lesson, we have under this a depiction of both a pedostatic probe and a pedo probe to show you kind of what the difference is. Obviously, as we mentioned, a pedo, both probes point, you know, into it's like, just like you think a probe would look like, and it hangs off the wing. And I'm sure you guys know what this is. You checked it on the ground in your private pilot training points into the free stream. And then it collects air at that, you know, the forward most point in the Ram air inlet. And then a pedostatic probe also has static air sources and that's going to be on the side, you know, it's on the side. So it's outside of the, so it's not getting that ram air. It's getting the static air. These can be good for IFR flight and IFR aircraft. Why? Well, because you can control the pedo heat and in IFR we're flying in clouds. Icing is a major concern. So, which we'll talk about here in the future. So it's nice to be able to control that heat there. You know, if you're, seeing some things again, which we'll get to that indicate some icing on your instruments. And you have that, you know, pedostatic probe, you can just turn the pedo heat on, uh, you know, melt that ice on that may be collecting over the static sources. It's an easy fix for icing in that regard. But your aircraft could have a, a pedo probe without the static source, and then you would have other static sources along your aircraft. But again, it, they may not have a heat source, right? And for IFR, you really want to have that heat source, that de-icing situation. So we have again here depicted a pedo static probe and the pedo probe without the static sources on the side. Pedo air is used by the airspeed indicator only. The airspeed indicator finds the difference in pressure between the air collected by the pedo port and the static port on the pedo head and calculates airspeed from this impact or dynamic pressure. Static air is usually picked up on the same pedo head but the port is found on the back or bottom of the probe where the atmosphere is static air. Your aircraft will also have an additional static port found on the side of the aircraft fuselage. Furthermore, there is a backup source found in the cabin in the scenario that the static ports outside the aircraft get clogged during flight. For a warrior, the alternate cabin source is found below and to the left side of the instrument panel. 
The static air is used by the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and vertical speed indicator. In the event of a static source clog or failure, all three instruments will show a faulty indication. Airspeed indicator uses both pitot and static air. Altimeter and VSI use static air only. In the ground scope, we have a picture of a Cessna Skyhawk and we outline where the pitot probe are. This is obviously review, but you'll have, we have a pitot probe below the wing. We have the static port pointed out on the side of the fuselage. And then we also show possible locations of the alternate static source inside the cockpit. Also below this, we have a, a video lesson on how the pitot static systems work. Again, I recommend that you guys review this. This is stuff we, we taught in our private pilot course you know, how the inside, the tubing and all that stuff, how it works, how it gets to your your instruments, which, which air gets to which instruments, all that stuff in the pitot-static system. If you need a review on that, I highly recommend you do because as IFR, we got to have a deep understanding of that. So we have that video in there and I'll put that video link in the show notes for you guys. All right, most of that you should have known from Private Pilot. So now we're going to get into something, some things that are new for you or more in detail than you learned in private pilot and we're going to talk about pedostatic system errors so let's go a little bit more in depth now into these pedostatic systems pedostatic system errors prior to taking off for a flight pilots should check their pedostatic instruments as well as all other instruments for errors the ground is a good place to do this because you know what your instruments should be reading you know that your altimeter should be reading the airport elevation, the VSI should be reading zero feet per minute, and the airspeed indicator should be reading zero knots. Let's go over some possible errors we might see from each of these pedostatic instruments and how we should deal with them as pilots. For altimeter, here are the things you need to be on the lookout for. Altimeter not changing during climbs or descents. If your altimeter continues to display the same value even during an obvious climb or descent, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. Specifically, when the altimeter is stuck, it is likely that the static ports vents have become clogged or iced up. Check your VSI as well. If this is also not changing its indication when you climb or descend, then you have a clogged static port. When no air is able to get into the static port, the altimeter will never sense any change in static pressure and will therefore continue to indicate the same altitude. If the static port is clogged, you won't be able to use your VSI, altimeter, or airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator may look like it's functioning normally because it still may change with changes in pitot pressure, but the indications will be erroneous. Use your alternative static port inside the cabin. Now for temperature errors. Altimeters work by finding the difference between standard pressure and the measured static pressure and turning it into an altitude. When the pressure is not standard, we use the altimeter setting window to correct for it. When the temperature is not standard, we have no way of correcting for it, and therefore we'll have an error in our indicated altitude. Now we talked about these temperature errors with the altimeter, but let's just quickly review what we're talking about here. On cold days, remember the column of air measured by the altimeter is contracted. This results in the altimeter measuring less pressure above it. In other words, the column of air shrinks, less column above the aircraft equals less pressure. The altimeter sensing less pressure means the indicated altitude will be higher than it should be. This is where the mnemonic device from high to low, look out below comes from, because when you fly from a high temperature area to a low temperature area, the altimeter will read lower pressure and thus higher altitude, and you'll be flying lower than you think you are. In other words, look out below. Now, on the flip side, on warm days, the column of air measured by the altimeter is expanded. This results in the altimeter measuring pr more pressure above it. In other words, the column of air expands, more column is now above the aircraft, and that gives you more pressure. The altimeter sensing more pressure means the indicated altitude will be lower than it should be. This is where the mnemonic device from low to high clear the sky comes from. Because when you fly from a low temperature area to a high temperature area, the altimeter will read higher pressure and thus lower altitude, and you will be flying higher than you think you are. In other words, clear the sky. Then for VSI. If your VSI is not displaying zero feet per minute on the ground, but is slightly off, then you simply can note this error and apply it as your VSI zero point while using it in IFR flight, for example. 
If your VSI is displaying negative 150 feet per minute on the ground, then you know that every indication is going to be 150 feet per minute lower when you are flying. So if you want to climb at 500 feet per minute, you should target 500 minus 150 is equal to 350 feet per minute on your VSI. If you want to descend at negative 500 feet per minute, you should target negative 500 minus 150 is equal to negative 650 feet per minute on your VSI. Another one is if VSI is not changing during climbs and descents. If your VSI continues to display the same value even during an obvious climb or descent, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. Specifically, when the VSI is stuck, it is likely that the static ports or vents have become clogged or iced up. Check your altimeter as well. If this is also not changing its indication when you climb or descend, then you have a clawed static port. When no air is able to get into the static port, the VSI instrument will never sense any change in static pressure and will therefore continue to indicate zero feet per minute. If the static port is clogged, you won't be able to use your VSI, altimeter, or airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator may look like it's functioning normally because it still may change with changes in pitot pressure, but the indications will be erroneous. In this situation, we would want to use our alternative static port inside the cabin. All right, now let's go on to talk about errors of the airspeed indicator. First off, if the airspeed display decreases continuously to zero knots or beyond, if you see your airspeed indicator slowly decrease continuously to zero knots or even past zero knots, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. When you first see the airspeed decrease, first check your attitude and other instruments to make sure you aren't actually losing airspeed. It is important to trust your instruments, but use them to cross check each other so that you know if one is actually faulty. If you are confident that you should not be losing airspeed, or if the airspeed goes to a low enough value that doesn't even make sense like zero knots or beyond, then your ram or pitot port is clogged or iced up, but your drain hole is not clogged or iced up. When the pitot port is clogged, the dynamic pressure in the system will slowly start to go to zero when the pitot pressure escapes the drain hole. Remember, airspeed indicators work by converting the dynamic pressure, or in other words, the difference between pitot and static pressure, to an airspeed. Another one is if your airspeed display remains constant regardless of your acceleration. If you see your airspeed indicator stuck at a constant value, no matter how fast you speed up or how slow you slow down, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. When the airspeed indicator remains constant, you are almost certain to have a clogged pitot or ram port and a clogged drain hole. With both the pitot port and drain hole clogged, the dynamic pressure inside the system is stuck in there and cannot escape. So there is no change to your airspeed because the dynamic pressure is not changing and your airspeed indicator works by converting dynamic pressure to airspeed. Let's talk about what will happen if you start to climb or descend. If you enter a climb or descent with the pitot port and drain clogged or iced, then your airspeed indication will change in this situation, your airspeed indicator is essentially working like your altimeter and changing with a change in the static pressure that it is sensing. Again, the airspeed indicator works by converting dynamic pressure to airspeed, but it calculates dynamic pressure by the difference between pitot pressure and static pressure. So if the pitot port and drain are clogged, keeping that pitot pressure of the equation constant, but the static pressure port is not clogged, then the static pressure will change with a climb or descent in altitude, right? Because that's when the static pressure changes with altitude. And the difference between the static and pitot pressure will change, and therefore the airspeed will change. So we have an equation where we have one variable not changing and the other variable is still changing, so the answer is still going to change. So our airspeed indicator, which finds the difference between pitot and static, right? That value is still changing because our static pressure is still changing when we, if we climb or descent, but not if we maintain the same altitude. So how can you tell if this is happening or if your airspeed indicator is just working normally? Well, think it works like an altimeter if the pitot and drain are clogged, but the static is not. So if your pitot port and drain are clogged, but your static port is not clogged, then when you climb, your airspeed will increase. When you descend, your airspeed will decrease. Again, that's because your airspeed is going to increase because your static pressure is decreasing. So the difference between pitot, that p constant pitot and that decreasing static pressure will increase. So your airspeed thinks you're increasing in airspeed, even though you're just 
lowering your static pressure. And when you descent, your airspeed will decrease, again, because that static pressure is going to increase, making the difference between pitot and static pressure smaller. And your airspeed takes that difference and converts it to airspeed, so it thinks its airspeed is getting smaller. So again, when you climb, your airspeed will increase. When you descend, your airspeed will decrease when your pitot port and your drain are clogged, but not your static port. So in this situation, what we would do is we would turn on our pitot heat. Now, let's move on to true airspeed and temperature. Some aircraft are fancy and have true airspeed built into the airspeed indicator. True airspeed is indicated airspeed corrected for non-standard atmospheric conditions, like temperature. True airspeed and indicated airspeed have the same relationship with temperature as indicated altitude and true altitude. Although they share the same relationship, altitude and airspeed, you know, indicated and true, the reasoning is slightly different. So let's dive into that a little bit. And first, let's talk about in cold air. So as we remember in with an altimeter, the column of air above the altimeter contracts in cold air. And so the column above the altimeter is less. The altimeter senses less pressure and the indicated altitude is higher because, again, it senses it coordinate or it associates less pressure with higher altitude. So the indicated altitude is higher than true altitude. Well, in cold air, the indicated airspeed is also higher than the true airspeed, but the reasoning is slightly different. It's not this column of air explanation. This time, the cold air has more density, and the airspeed indicator senses a higher impact pressure, leading it to indicate a higher indicated airspeed. So it's about density when we're talking about the airspeed. Now, in warm air, again, the column of air expands, and the altimeter senses more pressure, and the indicated altitude is lower than the true altitude. For airspeed, the indicated airspeed is also lower than true airspeed, but again, the reason is slightly different. This time, you guessed it, the warm air has slightly, is less dense than the, and the airspeed indicator senses a lower impact pressure because of the less density, the less air molecules hitting, going into that ram pressure, leading it to indicate a lower indicated airspeed. So that's kind of a lot to remember in terms of airs, but we've made a video for you guys that kind of breaks it down and it's about the pitot-static system errors in our aircraft. So I'll put that link in the show notes and we have that inside the lesson. And now let's move on to talk about the alternate static source on our air. We mentioned above to use your alternate static source when you suspect that your primary source is iced or clogged up. However, there is a small error associated with your alternate static source that you need to be aware of. When using your alternate static source, your altimeter will read slightly higher than actual. Your airspeed will read slightly higher than actual, and your VSI will initially show a climb when you make the switch before correcting itself to be accurate after a few moments. These errors are because the alternate static source uses the air inside your cabin. It does this because it assumes that icing is occurring outside, and therefore it uses the warmer cabin environment as a backup. The static air inside the cabin is actually slightly less dense and slightly less pressure than the static air outside. This is because all of the air flowing around the cabin will slightly suck air out of the cabin through small nooks and crannies, which creates a small vacuum effect which lowers the pressure in the cabin. A lower pressure in the cabin means a lower static pressure when using the alternate static source and a lower static pressure fed into your instruments will change their reading. Altimeter gets lower static pressure from alternate source and associates it with higher altitude. Airspeed indicator gets lower static pressure from alternate source, which increases its calculation of dynamic pressure and increases its airspeed indication. VSI initially feels lower static pressure, which makes it believe you have climbed to higher altitudes, but the vent in the VSI will equalize this error after a few moments so that your VSI will initially show a climb before leveling out to an accurate reading. If you notice anything about these errors, specifically for altimeter and airspeed indicator, I want you to notice that the errors are in the worst case direction. When we think we are higher than we are, this is very dangerous in IFR flight due to terrain and obstacles that may be below us. When we think we are faster than we actually are, especially on an IFR approach, this is very, very dangerous. So if you have to use your alternate static source, be very careful and remember these changes to your indications. One thing you can do as a pilot is test your alternate source during a time when you don't need it. When you do this, you can note the differences between your readings with your primary source and reading with your alternate source. This way, when you need to use your alternate source, you will know what to expect in terms of erroneous readings and you can apply those corrections in your head. 
For example, if your altimeter reads 100 feet higher and your airspeed indicator reads 5 knots higher with the alternate source, you will know to subtract 100 feet to your altitude and 5 knots to your airspeed when using the alternate source. And for each aircraft that you fly, this would be some good notes for your aircraft to have in your kneeboard. That's what I would recommend, testing these out when you don't need them so that you have the information for when you do need them. All right, so this has been our lesson on the pedostatic instruments. Hopefully you guys learned a lot of new stuff, a little bit more in depth on those errors. Again, I put the video in the show notes, so go and check out that video. It kind of summarizes it, it gives some visual aids to what we're talking about here, and then take the quiz inside the lesson. The combination of you know the audio, the visual aids in there, reading it. You know, some people like to read. I'm a, I'm a big reader when I learn. And then the video and, and then quizzing yourself and kind of doing that over and over again is how best really learn all this stuff. And then remember, uh, now we can link with your flight instructor. So if you have a flight instructor already for IFR, you know, have them sign up on our course. I'll put that link in the show notes and then just have them email us or uh, with their students that are in part-time pilots so we can add them to their group. Super, super powerful, allows you guys to, you know, work together on, on your training and really put it to good use. All right, so that's the episode on pedostatic instruments. Next week, we're going to talk about the vacuum and gyro instruments, right? And then we'll get into turns and turn rates, magnetic compass, and more instrumentation stuff specific with the lens of flying in IFR flight. So thank you everybody for listening and I'll catch you guys next week. Are you struggling on your radio calls to ATC? Are you looking for a better way to practice that's not up there in the air in that stressful situation? Well, I wanna talk to you guys about something called AR Sim or Aviation Radio Simulator by Plain English. It lets you practice talking to ATC through all phases of VFR and IFR flight from taxi out to takeoff all at your own pace. There's no simulator setup needed and it works on any device, mobile or the web. So whether you're a novice or seasoned pro, the guided communication curriculum in trainer mode will elevate your comps proficiency greatly. Download ARSIM by Plain English today and check out our show notes where you can get 10% off using a coupon code. It is a great tool and I highly, highly recommend it.